Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, it's my great pleasure this morning to be able to share with you our brown fat research at the Garvin Institute. And I've um, chosen the portrait of Mona Lisa to begin my talk <laughs> for good reasons. Um, who, who has heard of brown fat actually? May you raise your hands? Not, not many, and, and that's because for many, many years, it has been thought that brown fat does not exist in adult humans. And that's why the rediscovery of brown fat has been viewed by many as a renaissance in medical research. And through the rediscovery of brown fat, it has really opened our eyes to a whole new metabolic world. And I hope in the next 10 minutes or so, demonstrate to you the beauty of this wondrous organ, uh, how we may fight fat with fat, and how we may harness brown fat to treat obesity and diabetes. So we are in the midst of an obesity epidemic. I think we are all aware of that. Two thirds of the Australian population is overweight or obese. And as you know, obesity is associated with significant morbidities including heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. It also increases the risk of arthritis and severely compromises the quality of life of those individuals with joint pain. We just heard a wonderful talk on cancer. Obesity is also a risk factor for cancer. Cancers are more common in overweight and obese individuals. In fact, the risk of death is higher in obese or overweight people with cancer. The reduction in life expectancy associated with obesity is substantial. Studies have shown that for an individual who um, was obese, you say at the age of 40 years old, would live up to eight years less than those who were not. Even if you were overweight at the age of 40, life expectancy was expected to be less by about three to four years. In fact, some studies suggest that the increase in life expectancy we have seen in the last two centuries may come to an end simply because of an increase in the prevalence of obesity. Unfortunately, current effective and safe therapies for obesity are lacking. At the moment, we concentrate on diet, exercise, and there are a couple of medications which may be helpful in treating obesity. But as you know, despite global research effort, current therapies are insufficient to counteract the obesogenic effects of an overnutritious and sedentary society. And clearly, we need new directions in obesity treatment. And Garvin has turned to understand the biology of fat cells to search for new ways to combat obesity. So I'll show you our understanding of <laughs> fat cells. There are two kinds of fat cells in the body. White fat cells are the more well-known kind. So basically the majority of fat in our body is basically white fat. It functions as a site of energy storage so if we eat too much and exercise not adequately, we can put on weight and that's white fat. And we can demonstrate this very well in the laboratory because if you feed animals what we call a cafeteria diet, um, basically high fat food, uh, animals can put on weight and develop diabetes just like us. You can see that white fat showing on your left consists of a big fat droplet inside the cell. That's why it's so efficient in storing excess energy so that we can use it during times of energy shortage. And as you can see, that is an important survival benefit thousands and thousands of years ago when our ancestors were threatened by famines and starvation. But in today's world, when nu nutrient is abundant, this magnificent energy storage capacity of fat cells can translate into core morbidities. Now, in contrast, well, I've got brown fat cells as a picture on your right. In contrast to the white fat cells, brown fat cells contain many very small fat droplets. Rather than storing energy and storing the fat, brown fat cells actually burns the fat 
and releases the energy as heat. So think of brown fat cells as like a generator, a powerhouse. It's able to basically combust excess energy and transform it into heat which is lost to the environment. So in the laboratory, animals with lots of brown <laughs> fat are lean. Even if you feed these animals a cafeteria high fat diet, they are protected from obesity, they are protected from diabetes, from fatty liver. In fact, some of these um, animal models with abundant brown fat enjoy a longer lifespan. So in addition to brown fat being what we call a thermogenic organ, producing heat to keep animals warm, they appear to have this magnificent role associating with increased metabolic health as well as longevity. So to illustrate this further, I would like to show you the power of brown fat through my favourite dessert. <laughs> um, I'm, I have to say food is wonderful and I really like and enjoy food and I think dieting is important but we have to enjoy the wonder of food as well. So this piece of um, a magnificent dessert contains about roughly the same amount of energy as what 50 grams of white fat would store. However, the same amount of energy can be combusted by roughly the same amount of brown fat into heat and lost to the environment. And in other words, whenever I consume a piece of dessert like that, I always wonder, is it going into my white fat or has <laughs> it been burned by my brown fat? But I hope that would illustrate to you how different brown fat is from white fat and because of its high energy utilizing capacity and glucose burning capacity, it is a very attractive target to treat obesity. So the question then is, well, do we have brown fat? I've shown you animals have brown fat and animals with lots of brown fat are protected from diabetes and obesity. Well, we knew for a long time that babies have brown fat and that's around the neck region and just behind their shoulder blade, very much like animals. And that's because when babies are first born, they are subjected to the cold environment, so they require this brown fat to generate heat to protect them from cold. Some people regard this brown fat as almost like an electric blanket for babies and small animals. But for a long time, it was believed that after the first year of life, this brown fat vanished. In other words, despite abundant evidence from animal studies showing how wonderful and powerful brown fat is, it has always been thought to be irrelevant in adult humans and, and because we don't have brown fat. And this belief was changed four years ago. So how, how did we find out adult humans actually have brown fat? It is by this new technology called positron emission tomography or PET scan. And this scanning was initially, it was initially developed to look for cancer in the body because it involves the injection of a glucose or sugar-like um, molecule which travels around the body and get taken up by tissues which uses lots of energy so we can visualize it. So on this video, you can see uh, the brain is dark because brain is very metabolically active. It takes up lots of sugar. You can see the heart in the middle of the body. Again, the heart is pumping all the time, very metabolically active. And that's why it is a very important tool to diagnose cancer because cancer uses lots of energy. And this is a technique uh, oncologists use to look for where cancers are. And at that time, when this was developed, some oncologists and um, PET scan doctors noticed, hmm, there is some interesting, um, very intense activity in the neck area of adults. And there was initially a scare that, whoa, would, do, did these people have cancers around their neck? It took us a while to figure out this very metabolically active tissue in the neck, almost as active as the heart and the brain, it's not cancer, but it's actually brown fat, which I'll show you in the next picture. Where is brown fat in humans? This is, I'm going to show you it in the color red so it's easier to see. So this is a, a PET scan. You can see that's the um, section of the body with the neck in the middle. You can see the shoulders, the collarbones, the dark areas are the lungs. 
and the red is where brown fat is found. So in contrast to white fat, where, where we can accumulate around our tummy, our limbs, brown fat is found around the lower neck and around the collarbone. Uh, the location is a bit different from where we would expect based on animals and babies' um, brown fat because they, those are found in the upper back and that's why it has escaped medical attention for so long. But now with PET scan, we could map the location of brown fat around the collarbone and neck area. And you can also quantify how much brown fat a person has. So based on these scanning, a, a person may have brown fat quantity ranging from about 50 grams to 200 grams. And you may say, well, that's not a lot. Like, what is that tiny amount of fat going to do to my body? Well, remember, this is extremely metabolically active. So based on the metabolic activity of this brown fat, even the quantity is low, if it is continuously active, it could burn as much energy as four and a half kilogram of <coughs> white fat in a year. So it illustrates how much energy it can utilize. So we then went ahead and looked for, well, if that's the case, do people with brown fat weigh more or less than those who don't? So we performed a study looking at PET CT scans of nearly 3,000 people who have gone through the scanning. So this is again a, a picture of the PET CT scan. You can see the dark areas in the neck. That's the brown fat. And brown fat is present in over two thirds of humans in different abundance and women those who are lean and those who have lower blood glucose or sugar levels tend to have more brown fat. In other words, brown fat is associated with leanness and lower blood glucose, suggesting that it may have the same protective role against obesity and diabetes, just like what we saw in animals. We then went ahead to biopsy this fat just to see, well, it is using lots of energy, but is it really brown fat? When we biopsied it under the microscope, it indeed showed evidence of brown fat, and on a high magnification, it contains very small fat droplets, just like you would expect in animals. So we were very excited that, right, in fact, this powerful fat-burning organ is actually present in adults. How can we activate it? So we work on ways to stimulate brown fat in humans. You may recall I said brown fat is there to keep babies and animals warm. So we thought it makes sense if brown fat can be activated by mild cold exposure. So this individual had a PET scan at a comfortable 24, 25, very warm temperature. You can see around his shoulder region, the fat is black, there's no activity. So the fat is quiet. After we expose him to cold temperature, just 19 degrees, just like today, <laughs> a cool autumn day, you can see the fat in the neck start to consume lots of energy. And that's when the brown fat is being activated. And we further look at that by using a special device called an infrared imaging um, device, which looks for heat production in the same individual. And you can see around the neck area, despite his body being cooled down by the mild cold, the brown fat area around the collarbone was bright red, indicating the brown fat was generating heat, consuming energy to protect the person from cold. Mm -hmm. And then that led us to think, right, so cold exposure can activate brown fat. But we all like warm, cozy room. So I can't really tell my patients Right, go and expose yourself to coal, activate your brown fat to lose weight. Mm -hmm. So as an endocrinologist, I want to understand what tells the brown fat to become active. So if you think about it, our body sends the environment by two major mechanisms. One are by nerves. Our nerves can sense where we are, how cold it is, how hot it is. The other important system is the endocrine or the hormone system. Hormones are like messengers in the body. 
they travel from organ to organ to tell everyone what's going on in the body and what's going on in the environment. So I thought, well, could there be special brown fat hormones telling these fat cells to become active? And indeed, we, I, we found out that these brown fat cells secrete special brown fat hormones. And they travel in the bloodstream to white fat, you know, remember the ordinary white fat cells? And you can transform the white fat cells into brown fat. We call that a fat browning phenomenon. In other words, fat cells who are normally there just to store fat now becomes energy burning, heat producing brown fat cells. And to prove that further, we look at individuals who had very little brown fat to start off with. So you can see this person on a PET scan. There, was, there wasn't much darkness in the neck because he had very little brown fat. So we harvest the precursors of fat cells from this individual in the neck. We call them baby fat cells. So, so in, at this stage, they were not burning much energy, not producing heat. They were not brown, brown fat cells. Then in the laboratory, we treat these baby fat cells with the brown fat hormones we found in the person. And we can transform these baby fat cells into energy burning brown fat cells. And you can measure actually the heat produced by these cells. Before the brown fat hormone stimulation, the cells looked blue. And on the scale of the temperature, you could see it was hardly making any heat. After treatment, it turned bright red because it is now transforming itself into a, an energy producing heat burning fat cells emitting heat. So brown fat really from the research in Garvin Institute and also worldwide has really been shown to be present in most adults. It's associated with leanness and lower blood glucose levels. And most importantly, it can be stimulated by special brown fat hormones in the laboratory. And because of its energy utilizing capacity, it is a very attractive target of obesity treatment in adult humans. And right now at the Garvin, we are starting up a translational research program spanning the whole spectrum of brown fat biology. Starting with the individual, understanding what kind of strategies, both diet and environment and drugs can increase brown fat. We look at the behavior of the brown fat organ in the laboratory, look at ways to activate the brown fat cells, ultimately hoping to find a new way to treat obesity. And although brown fat research is, in, is still in its infancy, we believe it holds great promise as a powerful and novel tool to combat obesity. <coughs> and I really much look forward to sharing with you our, <laughs> the findings of our future research. And um, we really thank you for your tremendous support and interest uh, in our research at Garvin. Thank you.